Hello and welcome back. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, yeah, it is. It's the Mission Accepted Show. Isn't that like the coolest name? Because I know a lot of you out there have accepted many missions, but the mission of an entrepreneur, a creative, an entrepreneur, people that do many things, it's very interesting because it's the kind of, it's the kind of project that you take on that has a life of its own. And once you accept the mission and once you say yes, and once you take that decision and somewhere inside say yes, and then it starts to go into action, honestly, all unforeseen things start to unfold. I really believe it's the true definition of providence and um, nothing better. We have an amazing artist with us today. I mean, there's multiple things that she does in her, in her sector, and I'm going to let her talk about that herself, but you know, here's the interesting thing when I, I spent a lot of, well, I spent 30 years hanging out and working with entrepreneurs and what we now call entrepreneurs. And really, truly, we all are all creative. You know, when you build a company or you write a song or you produce, it's a piece of you that's going out. You're, you're putting yourself out there. And so a lot of times people think of singers as singers. They think of actors as actors. They don't think of them as entrepreneurs, but trust me, they go through the same dynamic of getting themselves known, you know, you know, right? Getting themselves known, kind of putting themselves out there, um, getting themselves branded. They got to do social media like we do. They have to learn things like we do, you know, learning the financial part of a business. So um, I really, really wanted to make sure that um, all of us had a platform to be able to talk about. And I tell you, I have met the absolute coolest woman and you are going to hear from her today. Um, and I met Danny through a very interesting, serendipitous, you never would never know. I was talking to this really cool movie producer down in LA and we'd had a great connection and we were chatting and I was telling him about an event that I'm going to be participating in, in 2023. And uh, my, it's another whole podcast, but myself and my girlfriend walking across Ireland to raise money for the music industry, because as you can, if you know Janis Joplin, you'll know that's a nice 1967 poster in the back. And if you're listening on the podcast and not watching, then you'll, you won't be able to see it, but it's very cool. Um, and so we were talking about music and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You have to meet this amazing woman. And this amazing woman is with us today. So I don't want to take any more further time, but Danny, thank you so thank much you. for coming on too. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And it's so nice of John to like do this for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's what we got to do, right? That's what we got to do. And one, one thing leads to another, you never know where it's going to go. And really after having a conversation with you, that was so much a part of what I heard in terms of your story, like this door opened or you were knocking on this door and that door wouldn't open, but then, you know, like you're, you know, you always wanted to meet Keith Urban or what have you. And then all of a sudden you, you met him in this arena and and things not like in that. the way I expected. I wasn't expecting to be covered in rain and drenched and my <laughs> mascara running. <laughs> okay, now you're gonna have to tell that story. So everybody, here <laughs> is uh, Danny Stefanati. I'm hoping to make sure I pronounced her last name correctly. Danny, welcome to the show, and maybe tell people who are you? Like, what is it that you do, and and, and what's your story? Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for inviting me. Um, my story. I mean, I've come from one of the smallest little um beach towns in Perth and it's one of one of the most isolated capital cities in the world and I didn't grow up with um any like musical parents or anything like that but I had country music in my family my great uncle was a, a songwriter he wrote a hit called Red Back on the Toilet Seat and um I did get to meet him further down the road but um my journey I was basically just touring the outback for most of my Ever since I dropped out of high school, I knew I didn't suit the formal teaching of school and I wanted to be an artist, but I knew that music is real was really what I wanted to do. And um, yeah, I, I gave up dancing. My mom took me out of dancing when I was, I was very young. I was doing tap, ballet, jazz, all of them. And I came last at everything. <laughs> everything I tried, it just wasn't for me until I picked up the guitar and I haven't put it down ever since. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really interesting, right? Because when you think about, when you think about, I mean, I think we could all relate that our parents or that have children and you're like, oh my gosh, my, my, my daughter's coming in last. This is probably going to break her little heart. Right. And, and the decision to take you out. I, you know what, honestly, I went through that. My daughter was, um, yeah. 
she she was you know whatever she was in she was in ballet she was the the mm -hmm. nerves that would happen for her before the final performance and everyone always wanted her teachers are like please we want you to be the lead we want you to be yes. the main actor and she's like i love being the backup like it just wow. was her place to shine and so i yes. remember i remember that whole process and as a parent it must have been such a an decision for your mother to go okay what's happening here and yes. then for you to pick up the guitar so um so tell us you pick up the guitar mm -hmm. it feels like home it sounds like and then where did you take it from there well like, i was did... eight eight turning nine and my mom just knew that wasn't my gifting i couldn't quite learn the parts like all the other girls i picked it up really quickly and i was just a daydreamer of a kid i i just couldn't learn that fast when it came to movements and uh so, so we tried tried the guitar we found this gentleman that was teaching in his garage and he had Marilyn Manson and Kiss and all these like heavy metal bands and he was supposed to be a very good teacher and mum called him and said hey can you teach my daughter she's only eight turning nine he's like no 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 too young her hands will be too small and you know that's too young I don't take on students like that and my first lesson and I was um I learned an eagle song and twinkle twinkle little star and he was like yeah, yeah, I'll take her on. And then I started writing songs literally a couple of weeks later. So yeah, you just, well, you, you know, you know, when it feels, you, you feel like you're passionate about something and, and it was like instantly it had my focus and I didn't want to be anything else. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. I mean, you know, people, when they, when I say that's amazing, it's amazing because <clears throat> so many people spend a long time trying to find that feeling and whether it's amazing or how how you know glorious for you to be able to have that experience and that knowingness at that age mm -hmm. um and you know cuts your mom to being able to um recognize that for you so people that are not watching the video and aren't making a guess about your age right now we got to so how old are you so people like like you know they're, they're they may not know who you are how old are you right now yes. well i'm actually 32. okay Okay, uh -huh. so 32 and you've already been playing all this time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Kind so, of feels like walking. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're songwriting, you start songwriting by the time you're nine, you're playing guitar, you're learning, you're learning Eagles and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Yeah. That's gotta be part of a movie someday for sure. So <laughs> where, where did you take it from there? I mean, that's not like a, you know, you're not like making a decision and doing the, the marketing and the branding or whatever. So what happened from, you know, nine years old to the time where you decided to like move it to where you are now? Well, it wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't blessed with, my face was a bit mixed up when I was born. Well, when I was about nine-ish, I had the most crooked teeth you'd ever seen. And my mom's a beautician and she used to be waxing ladies and say to and i and they i would sing for them was they're getting waxed and they would say shame about her teeth she's not going to make it as a singer you know but i wanted to be a songwriter i think my voice wasn't very good so i really had to work at that but it just kind of happened organically i didn't think i could make a profession out of it or anything but when i went i was about 12 years old i went with my dad to tamworth country music festival and um I realized that I had some kind of gifting in songwriting because I started winning awards and I started getting all these spots where basically I was not at school very often because I was always gigging. I was always getting like opportunities to fly out to um, with Glenn Shorick and do shows and it, it became a point where my schooling was going down, <laughs> going down the drain because I had so much opportunities with music and I it wasn't until I got to my thirties that I've started realizing like my music isn't my identity. I, Cause I always used to think like the guitar and music is who I am. But I, as I've got older, I've realized it's like just a part of who I am and I'm lucky to find it. But yeah, I've been able to, when I moved to America, I've been able to find myself out here a bit more, which is cool. Mm -hmm. That is cool. I mean, I think that's part of it. You, your, your gift came so young, so that makes perfect sense that that would be. And and I think a lot of us go through that process. Um, I think it was really for me late thirties, or actually yeah. no, yeah, about thirty six, thirty seven when I when I finally had the epiphany, and it happened actually in a holistic treatment with my teacher from India, and wow. we're doing this big, we're doing this big um, 
it wasn't a ceremony, but it was, it was a six hour treatment. And mm -hmm. it, part of the treatment is, you know, you're covered in this clay and it's called a Kaya Kelp and it's from Ayurveda. And at a certain point she starts bringing in, um, bringing in energy, like just conversations. Like, so she's like, so she's like, bring in anyone that you feel like you need to forgive, bring in any situation you want to talk to. And then she's like, well, let's bring in your business. And I was like, what? She's like, well, let's bring in your company and yeah. talk to your company. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was the first epiphany that I was not my company. Because when you're a creative, it's like yeah. I'm not my artwork. I'm not my, <laughs> you know, that there's, a, that is an aspect of myself. And it took me that long to recognize that I was like, so I had a little talk with my company. I was like, okay, excuse me. I think that we could be doing a little better in things, <laughs> but it was, it yeah. was very, very much like that. I was very taken. I mean, I'm a, I was raised on country music. My first yeah. album was the Glenn was Glenn Campbell. And um, cool. people sometimes make, used to make fun of me. And I'm like, Oh my God, Kenny Chesney's playing in, in Las Vegas. <laughs> Let's go. They're like, yeah, have fun. <laughs> my, my daughter says that I'm a, I'm a city girl with a country heart and I'm like, I'll I take it. it. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> stagecoach. I hope stagecoach. We get to go to that. Yeah, Just absolutely. <laughs> So tell us, um, so here you are, you're, you're making your way. You've decided that uh, this is, or it decided you, you picked it, it picked you. Mm -hmm. So tell me what is, what, what are your dreams around your, your business or what are some of the cool things that have happened to you so far? What have you had to do as a musician to make your way much like an entrepreneur has to make their way in their business? Like, you know, what, what about that rain story where your mascara is pouring down your face? Tell us about that. Well, yeah, I, I used to think when I was 12 to 20, I used to think the only road to success is getting on a reality TV show, getting some exposure and then bang, you know, I won't have to worry. I can just, I can just tear her. I can, won't have to stress, you know, I can write for other people and do it that way. I thought that was the only road to success, but um you know how they have a lot of celebrities on the the voice and x factor and all yeah. those yeah. shows which is great publicity for people um i used to uh, one of my favorite guitar players growing up was keith urban and you know he's quite a bit older than me but like i looked up to him as a player and he was also from australia so he was the main person i could be like wow i i wish i could do what he does and um so i i didn't get like I didn't get aired on some of those reality shows. And I thought, oh, like, you know, that that just means I just need to be behind the scenes as a writer. Like, it's just not going to happen for me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, so my mom used to get devastated. Like, she was in the bathroom, like, ah, like, you didn't get in. And she was, like, so panicking about it. And, um, but we didn't know that years later I would end up singing for him in Nashville on a couple of days of me being there randomly on a trip and it was in the pouring rain he just finished a show at Bridgestone Arena and I had my my Gibson guitar with me and he actually signed it this one <laughs> and uh yeah he just came out after his show and heard me singing for a bunch of people and he was standing in front of me and I I was in a tropical dress it didn't even match like it was freezing <laughs> cold and and I, I remember having like pimples that day and I just imagined when I met him, I would look really pretty and, you know, have a microphone at least. But no, it was freezing cold. My mascara had gone everywhere. My hair was flat. It, I looked a wreck. And, and that was the day I met my, you know, my favorite guitarist. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? Isn't that it's like that, that's the that's the mystery to life, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, we put it out there, you know, we put it out there, you know, I want to meet Keith Urban, I want to, you know, and um, you know, sometimes the universe doesn't quite hear the same picture we have in our head. They're like, okay, yeah, well, here's your opportunity. So um, so that was great. So he got to you you got to meet him and yeah, it was it awesome. was a great moment. Um but from then on, that didn't lead to me like directly working with him, but yeah. it helped me uh, be able to move out here and get all my my letters together and, and move in the direction that I've always wanted to be. And um, ever since I was a little girl, I did see myself in America, but I always thought Nashville. But it's funny how we were talking about the biggest surprises. Yeah. And my biggest surprise I've had um, 
was in a good way <laughs> was um, where I'd be located. I never saw myself in Los Angeles and I actually had a quick visit when I was in my, you know, early, uh, I was about 24 ish. And I was like, nah, nah, this is not the city for me. I can't see myself here. I was like, I don't like it here. And then, you know, when it got to about 20 or 28 or 29, that's when I moved out here. And I have met some of the most genuine, beautiful people uh, in inside LA and an hour out of, out, out of LA country people that live in California that are like, have treated me like family. Like I have met some of the greatest people of my life out here. So yeah. isn't that amazing when, and, and that's a great surprise to have, you know, it's like, I mean, you, you know, you came from Australia. That's, that's mm -hmm. quite, that's quite a trip. And so picking where you're going to land, I imagine was an important decision, you know? So that's, that's, that's those leaps of faith. That's those, sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't know, sometimes you don't know. And when you start to say yes, things like that start to happen. And I'm sure there was times and tribulations and you talked about, so, you know, you thought if you, what was shows were, what reality shows did you go and try out for, or what was that experience like? Because I'm, there's a lot of people that are listening to this, that whether it's a TEDx talk, whether it's a stage, whether they, they want to be a dancer, a singer, an actor, and um, they, they go do the reality shows or they get on the TV yeah. shows or the game shows or whatever. What, what was that like? Um, I won't say the exact name of the shows just in case because of the contracts, but, um, but I do know I learned a lot out of them, but I was never aired. And I feel like there's a reason for that too. But, um, I w went through a few awkward, like I dressed weird at one stage. I, I just always put it back on, like, I'm just not good enough. Mm -hmm. And I never thought like I was enough until I stopped auditioning for those shows and just did my own thing and just started producing my own music and doing everything from scratch. And I realized I am enough. I didn't fit in a box, but I just didn't know what I was yet. Like <laughs> I was trying yeah. things out. I'm an artist, you know, but yeah. I do think those shows suit certain artists. Um, but for me personally, I just like felt a little uncomfortable in that whole like, yeah you yeah. know you get, yeah just I, I like to wear what I want to wear and I, I just I usually like to perform my own songs and um yeah I learned a lot and I met a lot of cool people that were also contestants just yeah I'm, I'm so thankful that I get to like create whatever I want to create now so yeah well and I think I it, it, I mean isn't that truly being a creative it's one of the things that we as creatives or entrepreneurs or artists like is, is a sense of identity and a sense of freedom. You know, there's something where you break away and get to create your own pieces, whether you're sculpting or painting or what have you. And that's why when you walk, in, walk into an art gallery, some people are like, are you kidding me? Like, I would never hang that in my living room. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure they didn't paint it for you. <laughs> yes. I'm sure they made it up for themselves. And so and yes. there's things that we're really drawn to. We're like, wow, that's really my style. I relate to that style. So, I mean, that's just the colorful world, right? So yeah. here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Your your um, career has expanded. Um, who know, I'm sure when you picked I up that I didn't expect that. Didn't expect yes. that. Yes. So, so tell <laughs> us about the expansion, because I think you've got some you've got some pretty cool things going on into the arena of film and movie right now. So share with us that yeah. stuff. And that kind of stems into country music, but I always thought, you know, I'm going to be a singer, songwriter, guitarist, and that's all, you know, I'm just going to stick to that, and that's what I am. But then um, with the, the acting and film world and producing and all that, like producing music and producing film like has kind of stemmed into that. Um, and also being in LA, it kind of goes together, which is so exciting because I love networking. I love meeting people in the arts. I didn't realize how many um, people in the film and music world are tied together. And um, yeah, so we've got, a, we've got a few projects coming up this next three years and um, I can't say the name of the country music star, but <laughs> we were talking about it, but I will be playing this artist. But um, yeah, we're pitching some to the major uh, streaming networks this year. And um, yeah, it's exciting. And I've also got a, a script called Danny's Paper Dreams that you guys should, um, it's getting quite a bit of attention. So you should check that out on IMDb. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get a few of my favorite artists on board with that one. And uh, I've got a few actor friends that we want to create a film for them too. So we're putting things together for that. And yeah. 
that's awesome. I mean, you know, the expansion of it. And so um, I can't say, and I'm, I'm not going to say, but I, I know the country music artist that she's talking about. And let me tell you <laughs> that this artist is adored by many. And um, I'm so excited. And of course, we'll absolutely bring you back on the show. Um, awesome. In, in, you know, I'm sure hopefully making the most amazing announcement. I'm sure everybody will know and hear. And it's, and it's such an incredible, incredible opportunity. As a singer, if you were to give advice to people that are just starting to find their own voice um, and wanting to make a way in this in this industry, what are what are some of the things that you would like to share with people that are that are just kind of breaking ground or thinking about coming in? What's you know? Can you give them some home court advantage, <laughs> like yeah. some advice? Um, I think the biggest things that that help me. Um, on the roller coaster of the music industry or entertainment industry is listening to your intuition and your gut. Um, I used to rely on my parents to tell me, you know, who, who should I go with? What producer should I work with? But as you get, you know, more in, in tune with who you are, you can, it's just like discernment and standing by your beliefs and, and say, not saying yes to everything. It's like saying no to more things than you say yes to. And like surrounding yourself with people that you want to be like. You know, um, hanging out with guitarists that are better than you so that you can become, you know, you should feel like you're a terrible guitarist next to them. And then that's a good room to be in and get rid of any toxic, toxic energy in your life and just um, create the music that you feel is most aligned with who you are and your beliefs. And um, yeah, don't feel like you're going to get cancelled for it. You know, just stand firmly on that and the, the money will come, the opportunities will come if you're like radiating um, a palette of art that is is authentic to yourself, you know. Yeah. That's that's incredible advice, not only for your industry, but honestly for life, right? And <laughs> um, no, really, we always I've say- I've made a know, lot of mistakes. I'm still learning, but you know. <laughs> and, and we do, you know, and I yeah. think as you start to get a little more seasoned, the mistakes start to get a little less painful because mm -hmm. you've already had them. And right. so you can get to the place where you're tweaking or you recognize a possible challenge before it gets to be a challenge and you can make another decision, but you can only get wisdom when you get wisdom. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you have to have those experiences and have people, like you said, around you. Like people have asked me like, you know, how, how have you gotten to where you've gotten to? And I'm like, coaches, therapists, business coaches, mentors. I mean, you name it. It's right. like people that know more, that do more and learning enough to know that if I don't know something about an area, I'm going to hire an expert. Exactly. Or I'm going to go talk to an expert. And one of the things that I love when I was listening to you is that you didn't stop asking, like you didn't stop exploring. I mean, you have a very uh, beautiful, radiant glow about you. And I know that those who are listening oh. to the podcast can't see that necessarily right now, unless you're watching at the same time and they can go check you out, but you have quite a glow about you. And oh, thank you. I, I think that you, you have definitely learned the ask, you know, like putting it out there. I want to, I want to meet Keith. I, I'm looking for this. I, you know, <laughs> you, you, you are asking whether it's the universe or whether it's people or what have you. It doesn't seem like you're afraid to put yourself out there. And, and I think that's, you know, obviously part of your success. Oh yeah. You have to be direct. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm too direct, <laughs> but I used to be very shy, but as I got older, I learned, I, you know, have to, no one else is going to do it for you. You just, you, I put myself in some stupid situations. Like I've, I've knocked on doors. I've gone into studios with my tapes. I, I want you guys to hear me. I'm the next jewel. You gotta hear me. <laughs> and it gets me in trouble sometimes, but I don't care, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Wouldn't you rather be in trouble than than not known? Yeah. That's rather, right. I mean, yeah. at least you're being talked about, right? At least you're like, <laughs> who's that crazy girl? Who let her in the front door? Don't ever let her here again. Who was that? Well, her name was okay. And so they're gonna hear and they'll see you like, oh my gosh, look at you walking across the you know, the red carpet. I remember saying no to you. Damn. What Lisa made thinking? an impression. <laughs> it's like a bad, Drew, it's like a Drew Barrymore moment. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So here, here it is. Um, you've got some movie stuff going on, you know, uh -huh. you, you're, you're writing your own songs. 
Oh, and for you other know, artists, I forgot to tell you that one. Yeah, no, tell us. Okay, sure. Yes, there, there's an artist that was on The Chosen Movie, which is the biggest Christian movie series. Oh, is it TV or TV series? Yeah. Um, to come out. Um, I don't know if they film it in Texas, but anyway, I've been uh, invited to write. We just finished writing a song for one of the singers that's on that show. So that's been really cool. And she's based in Nashville. So yeah, all these exciting things in the CCM world, the country world and LA. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You're going to have to let us know. And obviously before we go, you're going to be telling us how to, um, how people can get in touch with you and how to mm -hmm. follow along. And we're also going to be um, just so, you know, my audience that knows um, we're starting to release it. We're doing um, myself and a colleague of mine. Like I said, we're walking across Ireland to raise money for the music association. And we're not just walking across the country. We're literally walking 10 marathons one day after the other to raise awareness, support, um, relationships yeah. and financial support to the music industry because, yeah. you know, we both um, love music and, and we both have a belief around music that I think it's one of the most powerful vibrations in the world. It doesn't matter your age, your color, your gender, you know, what kind of music that you love. We all have a song that when we hear it makes us feel good, you know, yes. um, and, and so we think that the world needs lots of that. Um, absolutely. And so supporting all music and um, we're working with an organization. Yeah, that's in 19 countries and hopefully even more so by the time we finish this. And so if you guys go to the Instagram, they did it to her. We're going to have Danny uh, just being able to put her journey on there as well. So you're going to be able to follow her on there. But honestly, Danny, tell these guys what your Instagram handle is and other places they can reach you. I mean, you might have to type it because my name's kind of hard to say, but it's Danny Stefanetti. Um, <laughs> you can follow me on my Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, yeah, I'll be, I post all my latest, uh, you know, shows and everything on Instagram. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, and we're also going to have your information on the show when this show releases. And we're going to do lots of social around this as well. Awesome. So thank you. Tap, in, tap into that. Um, that's very inspiring, your marathon. But you're going to lose too much weight. We're going to have to take you out to like a humongous dessert bar afterwards. Well, I'm sure we're going to, you know, it's going to be a, we're gonna, first of all, it's a walking, walking 10 marathons, but I'm sure yes. when we land at the pub at the end of each night, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of food for us to eat and fuel up on. Um, but uh, thank you for that. Um, and then we're going to end at the Cliffs of Moor, which is just going to be an absolute board. Uh -huh. We'll keep people. So people will be able to, to be able to, um, have you, you know, you'll be on the Instagram there and we'll be able to keep on top of what it is you're doing before we go to the most exciting part of, uh, the interview, and that's going to be able to hear that amazing voice of yours. Aww. Can you just, can you just share with our listeners? I mean, obviously you've had some incredible experiences, but as when you made the decision, when you took the mission on to make this your personal mission, you know, you could have, you could have been amazing at guitar. You could have, uh, you know, you've got it in your family. You could have stayed in Perth. You could have chosen a different life, but been an amazing, amazing, you know, sing within your community. When you took that mission on to kind of make it bigger and better for yourself, like that's what you wanted. What has been, and I know there's been lots, but if I was to ask you the question, what was the thing that was the most surprising? What was one of those like moments, like I never thought this was going to happen to me, or I can't believe I'm standing here and now, like, can you share with us one of those magical surprises that happened from saying, I'll take on the mission? Well, I have always liked risk and I, <laughs> I'm kind of addicted to um, getting no's. So it makes me work way harder when I get rejected. So it's um, moving from the home, my hometown, which was comfortable by the beach. Um, I know everyone there. I have a house. I, I, you know, have everything I need was becoming routine. And I knew I had to push myself to not to get famous or successful, but to get successful in a different way. So like find who I am and, and put my musical art to use. And the best way I knew how was to, I got a, you know, a call to, to uh, sing out in LA. And I, I just had to say yes, because I knew in my gut feeling, like my intuition told me that, you know, this is the place I'm supposed to be. And I prayed a lot about it. And I knew that even though 
I personally wouldn't have chosen that city. I knew it was the right thing for some reason. I can't explain it. Um, the biggest surprise I, I had was uh, pre-pandemic. Um, I've always loved makeup and, and jewelry and all that, all, all of that. Uh, but I realized that there's a lot of red carpet, you know, glitzy stuff happening in LA. And I, I thought it was like the coolest thing. But after the pandemic happened, I started to like get rid of a lot of my clothes and realize that I still like makeup and jewelry and stuff. But I realized that it doesn't really matter. And uh, I've met a lot of real people in the, on the farm and in the area, like Redlands. And, and I've realized that like even my guitars, like they don't really, I love playing them, but I used to put so much focus on material things. And when I let that go, like after the pandemic, I realized we're all in the same position. We're all going through the same stuff. And it's just like a beautiful time to be alive because there's just, I don't know, everybody's feeling like looking for hope. And I don't know, this is, I feel like it's a really good place to be. Yeah. yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Um, and I know we only have you for a short time, so um, we're so like blessed and grateful, but um, oh. you've decided and that you are willing that to, to share some of your music with us today. So yes. uh, would you like to play that Keith Urban signed uh, Beauty of a Guitar there yeah. and share some of your words really and then awesome. we'll, yeah. And I know for you guys that aren't, um, what you, you know, you'll be able to watch this live, but you'll be able to, to listen to it as well. So go for it, girl. I'm going to do my latest song because I usually like my latest ones the best. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> I've got two songs for you. I'll start with a time paused and then a 17 stars. But this next song, um, I watched the movie Serendipity and it kind of inspired this song. Um, it's about that moment that you meet someone you don't know you're going to fall in love with them but when they walk through the door you just have that time pause moment like the world stops everything stops and that's kind of the idea behind this song okay <laughs> Romance books down by a four street lane. Lovers look at each other through the rain. As I'm passing to the train, I had reasons, but I am not a reason in feelings. The kind that don't want to leave new meanings. Now everything reminds me of you. I've been floating, I've been my own thoughts, the time passed when you walked through the door. Oh, I knew I could the way time pours. Packing up boxes and moving to upstate. Tell myself I don't feel for you anyway or anymore. Yet all the time, I'm pretty sure you're always on my mind. And I'll roll say to you, I had feelings that I'm done with the reason in feelings. The comments don't want to leave new meanings. The time passed when you walked through the door. Oh, I knew I was yours. The way time passed. How many times do I have to tell my head when my heart knew all along? And how many times do I have to? And my heart knows where it goes. I have reasons, 
And I'm done with reasoning feelings I kinda don't wanna leave no meanings Now everything reminds me of you And I knew I was yours. Yeah, I knew I was yours. The way time pours. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, girl. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There was parts when you were singing, I'm like, oh yeah, she looks like, oh yeah, she could do. <laughs> That's I amazing. love writing love songs. I don't know. <laughs> They're so well, easy to write. I, I could see that for you. I could see that. You kind of ooze in the goose in the love. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. <laughs> now, did you want to do your, uh, did you say you wanted to do a second song or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's do a second song and then you guys will, will wrap up with a little bit of information for you and, uh, so exciting okay here we go well this one is called 17 stars and i wrote this during the pandemic on the farm and it's the first song i've ever written about an apricot tree and <laughs> when i did a bunch of shows in 20 2021 um all the people of redlands now know this like the people that come to my shows all sing this song it's really cute so it's one of my cheesy little love songs. Yeah. It's your signature song, girl. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Love the way that we argue on a Monday. It only takes two hours. Before we make up on Monday. And I don't need flowers. People are so divided, but I know who you are. And we don't need titles, babe. Just be who you are. I got 17 stars above me, and a God who really loves me. Real star family in the summertime. Got a lot of faith, got a lot of faith in you. Got a lot 
out of faith in you. <laughs> so oh. I told you <laughs> That's amazing. Thank I you. was fortunate. Yeah. Oh my. I mean, I had to make sure that I didn't start singing. I'm like, you're on a podcast. Keep the voice. Keep the words in your head, Deb. <laughs> Are you memorizing it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got it. Trust me. I love singing country, and my kids. That's oh. that's who I sing to is my kids. I love um, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, wow, I'm just blown away. That's incredible. I can't wait to see. I mean, we're going to be doing some great stuff and you're going to be all part of it. And so this is just the beginning of letting people know and letting our audience know who you are. Um, thank you so much for coming on to the show, Danny. It's oh, so incredible. And thank yeah. you for the amazing work you do. I, you know, I got to know you on our first call a little bit and it's just so inspiring what you're doing and how you're helping other artists and and it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. Well, so thank, thank you. you so much. And you know what? Listeners, viewers, you're out there and you're like, you are an entrepreneur. You've accepted a mission. You you are an artist. You're in media. You're, you're doing that solo journey. If you feel like you've got something to share on the show, please reach out. There's different platforms that Mission Accepted Media has its books and podcasts and endorsements and all sorts of really cool stuff so if you've got a yearning I mean clearly this woman knows how to knock on doors so just reach out and, and give us a call and um, what a beautiful accidental introduction right through John an accidental non-accidental right like that's how the world works so yeah yeah it's crazy. So thank you so much for being on the show and we thank will, you, Deborah. this won't be the last time. So thanks, Danny. Brilliant. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.